everybody. This is Adam King, and thank you so much for tuning in to this channel. I hope that when you watch this video today that your life will be changed. You'll get something that you didn't know before, and uh, it'll just help build you up and uh, grow up into the things of the kingdom of heaven. Uh, today I want to talk to you out of Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8. It's on the subject of asking. Uh, I know I've grown up, um, been in the church for most of my life, and I've done a lot of asking God for things, and I've heard a lot of people asking, and and unfortunately didn't have a whole lot of manifestation, didn't receive much of the answers to the things that, that I asked for. And, uh, you know, when you get a lot of those kind of results where you're not getting what you ask, you know, it's not God's fault. It's something on our end. God operate, operates by laws and principles, meaning they work the same way every time, and uh, they have predictable ends. So if God says to ask... And he says in his scripture we're going to read over in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 and 8. Let's go on and do that. This is verse 7. Ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and he that knocketh it shall be opened unto him. Now, I think this is interesting because these are superlatives that, that God is using here when he says, ask and you shall receive. Now, this, this word means if God had to create it to see to it that you received it, to see to it that you had it available to you. That's what he's talking about. If you can ask the way God designed for us to ask, it would be guaranteed unto you. So, so it really begs the question here, uh, do we ask the way God said we're supposed to ask? Is asking God the same way we ask our parents or we ask a boss for a raise or, or we ask for whatever it is we're asking somebody for? Is it done in the same manner? Uh, may I have this, please? You know, a lot of times, uh, I know my mom said, now, Adam, you don't have to ask right. You better put that please on the end of that thing. Mom, is it okay if I have this? Please. And the reason for the please is that, uh, you know, it made it sound polite and uh, put you in a position of favor that if you don't say it, you know, more than likely you ain't going to get it. You might get a scolding in, in the house I was raised up in if you, if you don't. But, uh, but that's how we ask growing up. We ask for things like that. But what about in the kingdom? Because God, he says, everyone that asks receives. Everyone that seeks, finds. And everyone that finds, or everyone that's seeking, they find. Everyone that asks, they receive. Everyone that knocks that door, it shall be opened unto them. Well, I, I mean, for a lot of years I didn't get that, and a lot of people I know didn't get that. So there must be something in this law, in this scripture, that we've really got to take a look at so that we can be guaranteed the results, and we can get them, and we can just stop talking about it, and the church can go on to manifestation of the promises of God instead of just talking about them. So let's take a little look at this. It says, ask, and you shall receive. Uh, asking, let's take a look at that word. What does it mean to ask? Well, the word there, translated ask, is a word that means to make demand. To make demand. When you make demand on something, it's already yours. When you make demand on, let's say, if your body's sick and you're making demand for healing in your body. Well, the reason you can make demand for healing is because the Bible says, by his stripes you were healed. That God sent his word and healed us. It says in another scripture that whoever finds his word has found his health, has healed. And so those things are things that Jesus died to give us and they're ours. Well, when he says ask, he's talking about you make demand on something that is already yours. When you go to the bank and you write a check for cash to get money out of your account, you don't hand the teller the check and say, can I please have $40? Of course not. No, that money's already yours secured into uh, your account. And you're just making demand on it. It's yours already. So when we take a look at this about asking and receiving, ask, you shall receive. God is trying to say, if you can know how to ask, then you can know that your asking is right when the receiving shows up. So when we ask, let's make sure that we ask according to the will of God. The Bible says, 
if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Again, that's another superlative. So if I am willing, in other words, if I do things the way God does things, uh, I'm guaranteed. He said, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask according to his will, he hears us. And if we know he hears us, then we know we have the petitions we desired of him. So there's something about this asking. So let me let me talk about this for just a moment. In the mind of God, now I've said this before in other videos, you're going to have to start seeing your life in the perspective of the way God sees you and the way God thinks. In his mind, he has made everything available to you. All things are yours already. He's he's you're, you don't come to God to get anything. Jesus came to humanity to give him everything. And humanity just doesn't know it's theirs already. So this is why when we do a lot of things in our life, we get a job, we work, and, and we get the money so we can buy the car. See, if we already knew that that car was ours, we wouldn't have to buy it. Hmm, now that's a thought, isn't it? Well, how would we get the car? Well, he already said, ask, <laughs> and you shall receive. So, if I ask for a car, you're saying I can receive the car? Yeah, sure. Why not? It's in the asking. It's not difficult to believe that God can provide a car. It's just we don't know how to ask. Asking, like I've said before, it's making demand on something that's already yours. So, in order to ask right, you have to start understanding what is already yours. Uh, you don't, you know, when, when you get to the, uh, the keys of your car... You, sit him, you see him sitting on the counter. You don't go over there and have to ask permission to grab the keys to get in your car. You just go get the keys and get in the car and go. Why? The keys are yours. The car is yours. You don't even think about it. Well, when it comes to the things of our life and asking God, we just act like we don't have those things. And we, we're trying to ask God to give them to us because we want those things. And the Bible says over in the book of uh, Psalm, it said, The Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. He put us in a position where you should never be in any want. He said, the lion and the bear suffer hunger, but they that are righteous and serve God shall never be in any want. Why? Because he's already provided you everything you would ever need and want. He's already provided it. Talking like you possess it already is asking. That's what it means to ask. Talk like you already possess it. You're not trying to get it. You have it. It's yours. Yeah, but I don't see it. What has that got to do with anything? He said, faith is the title deed to everything you petition God for. Faith is calling things which be not as though they were. He says in John chapter 15, verse 7, he said, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Now that's the same kind of superlative, the same kind of, of direct conclusion that we find in Acts chapter or uh, Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 and 8. It shall be done. So what when you begin to act and I begin to act just like God does and talk as if all things are ours, then we our conversation changes. We don't talk about our needs anymore because you don't have any. How can you have a need if you got the supply? We we're so need minded and not supply-minded. And that's where the problem is when it comes to our asking, because our asking is based on a conversation and a way of thought, a cultural way of thinking that says we don't have. And we, we have learned growing up that, you know, you get the job so you can get the money so you can have. And so we just, we are so trained by that, that we feel like and have been taught that if you don't get the job, don't get the money, you can't have the things. But that's not what God says. God says over there in Matthew chapter 6, he says so many people, the Gentiles, they go about seeing all the things that they want. They want to get what they what they want to drink. They're after pursuing uh, what they can eat, what they can drink, what they can wear. He said the Gentiles pursue all these things. But in Matthew 6, 33, he says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And he said, all those things will be added unto you. Everything else that the world is looking for and searching for and working for and trying to earn to get in their life and, and expending all of their energy to get, he says, if you just seek the first, seek the kingdom first, all those things will be added unto you. Then that, that, that to me is a no-brainer. So if I just seek the kingdom, and that's the way a king speaks, 
the way a king speaks in his kingdom is he sits on the throne and everything he says happens. He knows his words produce it all. And that's the way God is. God speaks and he has what he says. He says, if a man will say into this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. So God is all about you believing that your words got some power. And it's easy to do that when you know all things are yours. You're not trying to get something. Your faith is already taking possession of the thing God's already given you. Man, I know that's kind of a hard concept, even in the church, because we talk about confession. Confession brings possession. No, confession doesn't bring possession. You just pos you confess what you already possess. Now, that's the real attitude to have. If you don't know you possess it, then your confession is going to be really weak. But if you know it's already yours, hey, it's, it's easy to talk then, because you don't have to put a lot of struggle into it, trying to make convince yourself you know it's true. You just act like it is. Now, the attitude has to come along with the confession, though. You want to start acting like you believe you receive and that it is yours already. And that's really where the struggle is in the church. We don't want to believe it till we see it. But the truth is, if we ask according to what God says to do, ask according to the way he talks, he talks as if it is. When he says it, it is. And if we can just learn to do that, friends, I'm telling you, uh, you'll have more manifestations of God's power and presence and provision in your life. Then we can get off of this world system that's out there trying to, to keep us where we don't trust God and that we're just trusting the work of our own hands. And, uh, and I don't know about you, but it seems like everybody that's out there doing that struggles with trying to keep everything they buy. Uh, the world's attitude is get all you can, can all you get, then sit on the can. And don't want to let every, anything go because they work so hard for it. And, uh, and that's just not God's way of doing things, friends. You are more valuable than the sparrows. You are more valuable than the lilies of the field. He has decorated you with all the provision you'll ever need. Our job, friends, is to learn how to access it. And we do that when we know we have free access to it. That is called grace. And for by grace are you saved through faith by calling things which be not as though they were. So friends, take a look at this video and uh, pay attention to the scriptures. Go back and meditate on them and then begin to talk and ask like it's already yours. And then just expect it to happen and it shall. Well, until we meet again, I'm Adam King. God bless you. Bye-bye.